All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Christopher, and I come from Finland. I'm a consultant there. I've been working with that for the past 10 years. And I'm here to talk, you, talk to you uh, briefly about GraphQL API stitching. All right, so, so first I would, would like to ask you guys, uh, who of you have used or, or um, tried Apollo? All right, so there's a lot of people. All right, good, thank you. Um, so then everyone probably knows that GraphQL is an API query language and Apollo is a client, one of the clients for uh, querying GraphQL sir, APIs. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> if you can't see it, all right. Um, all right, so uh, one problem I stumbled upon uh, a while ago was that uh, we had two separate GraphQL APIs and we had to find a way to combine the two because we needed to do, do uh, queries uh, that ended up hitting both of the APIs at the same time. All right, so, so how can you do this today? Uh, <clears throat> here's our example. So we had a, <clears throat> a type called thread for a discussion thread, and it had this field called author ID. And then we had this other type in another API called user, and it had a few uh, fields typical to a user type. And we wanted to do, to do a query like this, so we wanted to query the thread by its ID, but instead of getting the author ID, we actually wanted the username of the author to show it in the UI. All right, so schema stitching is the way to accomplish this. And uh, there's a few concepts with schema stitching um, that I would like to go over. Uh, first, there's links. Uh, which are basically fields uh, that extend your existing types and adds new fields to them. Uh, like in this example, we're adding the author field to the thread. Uh, now, with GraphQL Tools version 3, which was recently released, um, we got a new feature called Schema Transforms. Uh, and it's a concept that solves a lot of problems when it comes to, to schema stitching uh, that there was previously. Uh, so one of the problems you had when you tried to stitch schemas together uh, previously was that, that you couldn't do any type of filtering, or at least not efficiently, uh, if you just wanted to expose a subset of your API to the outside world. Uh, so the filters allow you to do just that. You can just pick one uh, certain field on your query uh, type and, and expose that. Um, the other type of sub transforms that are built in now in the GraphQL tools is called renames. And this allows you to resolve a lot of name conflicts that you previously had. Like if you have similar name, let's say you query the GitHub API, you get a user and you have your own user, you have a conflict. But this uh, concept of rename uh, transforms allow you to solve this issue in a very elegant way. Uh, you can also create your own transforms, and, and this is a very powerful tool. You can basically alter the query coming in, you can alter the result going out, and you can also uh, change uh, the schema. So the last thing that was uh, briefly discussed yesterday was, was uh, schema delegation, uh, which basically, in short, it allows you to to keep around the original schema that you had from, from, let's say, one of your APIs. And even though you're not exposing it to the outside world, but in another field that is exposed, you need to query that field. So schema delegation is the way to achieve this. All right, thank you. Um, if you want, come talk to me afterwards, or you can find me on Twitter. I'm Chris 83 All right, thanks.